Hi everyone, welcome back to Coffee, Books, and Rain, where today and pretty much any time that you see my face on this channel, we are talking about as many literary things as possible. And today I wanted to bring you guys the book Something Kindred by Sierra Birch. And the reason that I wanted to bring this book to you guys is not only because I got to read this book as an advanced reader copy, but my podcast, Books Are Magical, got to interview this amazing author, and she was so lovely and so wonderful that I could not help but um, want to kind of come to you guys and sing some of her praises because she is so down to earth and such a personable person and I wanted to thank her in person for um, talking with me and my co-host or gosh we are we are both co-host we both co-host uh, books are magical together and um, Hannah <laughs> but anyway neither of us are like over the other we are absolutely hopefully equals in what we do we try to each have each other's back and Hannah does oh my gosh so much stuff so if anything she may be pulling more weight than I do um, could not could not do this without her um, this channel though is just my channel because I love to talk about books and sometimes I have a little bit of extra time and I have no life I have no um, significant other or special someone other than my two puppies who are currently about five feet to my right hand side uh, on the bed sleeping and snoozing away and Argus and Leo say hi to you guys but don't mess, mess with them they are sleeping and they are tiny little turds and I love them to death but <laughs> something kindred by Sierra Birch let me give you guys a little brief summary and then we will dive in so first and foremost I want to thank NetGalley and the publishing company for reaching out and for providing us an advanced reader copy of this book and for the publisher for reaching out and asking if we wanted to interview this author and we said yes with a huge huge um, exclamation point on the end of that because when we read the description of this book it sounded amazing and it was so Jerrica Walker had planned to spend the summer before her senior year soaking up the sun with her best friend on the Jersey sword sure instead she finds herself in Coldwater Maryland a small town with a dark complicated past where her estranged grandmother lives someone she knows only two things her name and the fact that she left Jerrica's mother and uncle when they were children but now Jerrica's grandmother's dying and her mother has dragged Jerrica along to say goodbye as Jerrica attempts to form a connection with a woman she's never known and adjusts to a life in a town where everything closes before dinner, she meets ghost girl Cat, a girl eager to leave cold water and more exciting than a person has ever more oh yeah and more exciting than a person has any right to be but cold water has a few unsettling secrets of its own the more you try to leave the stronger the town's hold as jerica feels the chilling pull of her family's past she begins to question everything she thought she knew about her mother her childhood and the lines between the living and the dead uh, and so it says welcome to cold water come for the ghosts stay for the drama so there is the general synopsis for something kindred and while talking to Sierra and she told us that this was originally became I think like the first hundred pages like the like first iteration of the first hundred pages were originally her master's thesis and it has it evolved into what we have here today now this book is expected for publication August 2nd of 2024 wait that's not correct. It's not August 2nd. I, if I remember correctly, this is going to be released in April, April 2nd of 2024. So just looking at Goodreads, Goodreads got it, has it August 2nd. I, unless they've changed the date, um, we spoke with Sierra just last week and I do believe it is April 2nd of 2024. Um, 
So that is the day that I plan to release this episode in conjunction with the day that we also release the podcast episode on most major podcasting platforms. Um, so going back to our conversation with her, I don't want to talk too, too much about that because I want you guys to go over there and listen to what she has to say because I think that it was a really great conversation. But we have some really great characters and I wanted to talk about this book and it's and I, I made notes like I really I, I made notes and I don't often make notes because sometimes I just like the book to kind of come out when I'm talking about it but it has a bunch of themes with regards to memories and letting go but also holding on of being scared to move forward grief and abandonment and why do people leave so those are just some themes that I was running into, which were really important to me at the moment because I was kind of going through some really tough um, abandonment issues kind of during the month of March when I was reading this. Um, they were really hard things for me to go through. They were more related to a friend, not a family member. They were The friend was not dying, but it almost felt as though it could have been easier if they were um, because it would have felt as though I could have had more closure. However, um, and again, the being scared to move forward. Uh, her grandmother has cancer. And so Jerrica, who's never known her grandmother, she meets this woman right at the end of her life. And she has never known her. So she's nervous to kind of get to know her for already for the simple fear that she's going to have to let her go very, very soon. And so she wants to hold on, but she wants to let go. She doesn't want to get too attached, but also going into cold water means that Jerrica's also going to have to go back to a place where her dad is. And she hasn't actually, I guess, seen her dad since she was about three. Now, According to the story, she has spoken to her dad on the phone a couple times and various emails and things like that, but there's been no real physical, like, sight or any sort of physical, like, touch. And so when she goes back to cold water, that was something also of a shock to her as well. It's like, it's a place that she's never been or that she remembers being. And yet, it's a place that has a lot of ties, of familial ties and home ties. Not only for her mom, but for herself. And so when she gets there, there are a lot of things that feel as though that tie her to it. And part of the description, it says magical realism meets Southern Gothic. And I think a lot of people, they read the term Southern Gothic and they thought it meant Gothic in the way that we get spooky ghost vibes and hauntings and things of that nature. And I'm going to say something. There is a lot of haunting. It's just not so much the ghosts of the town. It is memories. It is the past lingering. It is um, not wanting to move forward and not wanting to make a, um, not wanting to build from what we already have. And I think those are some of the things that everyone in this book has to like, they, they don't want to move forward. So we have Jerrica's mom who she it's still so bitter that her mom left when she was a child. Well, we come to find out a secret about Jerrica's mom as well. And there, there's almost some um, irony in it as well. But the thing is, is they don't see the um, how this Kurt person can be upset. And then this person says that the others shouldn't be upset. Uh, and I'm just trying to keep it a little vague because I don't want to give too much of the story away when it comes to spoilers and things of that nature. But it's not horror and it's not gothic in the way that you would think paranormal and ghosts and hauntings and things of that nature. 
These people are haunted by memories of things that have been done to them. These people are more or less holding on to anger, to sadness, to frustrations, to loss. And these are the things that they can't let go of. These are the the bigger ghosts rather than the ones that are still in the town. And even the ones that are still in the town, the ones that get referred to as echoes, are still memories of people who seem to want the town to remember and honor them and then move forward. And I think that's something that gets kind of overlooked a little bit that we forget to kind of say okay that that makes sense where this is not ghosts waking you up in the middle of the night haunting you and moving your stuff around like yeah some of that kind of happens a little bit but the thing is is it's not in the paranormal way that when you watch like spooky ghost shows on youtube like shadows on the wall or those sort jumping out and scaring you you're gonna get a couple small small paranormal moments but it's not a paranormal book it is more about grief loneliness sadness abandonment and so it is more about family drama memories and those sorts of things and that's what i want to kind of like convey to you as the reader is like i want you guys to be really receptive of how raw some of these emotions are and um how vulnerable some of these people are but like they need to kind of work with their feelings in order to be able to move on and i think a lot of them just try to run away instead of facing those feelings and maybe that's why people leave but anyway um that is where I want to kind of leave this conversation. I was kind of looking at my notes, but I do realize that some of my notes are really more geared towards the interview that we actually had with Sierra. So please, please, if you've made it this far in the episode, I want you to go listen to our podcast episode. Books are Magical is going to be called Something Kindred with Sierra Birch. And uh, she is a phenomenal author. Please go find this book. Uh, it is not super long. It is going to be an emotional more than anything read um i would say it is a young adult read but i think adults are also going to be able to appreciate it as well um so please give it a chance if it feels like it might be up your alley um again this is not going to be like spooky ghost paranormal this is going to be a little bit more of a drama emotional um, with some ghost undertones and um, there is some LGBT um, theming as well that was really cute and well done. I really liked some of the romancing involved. It was very cute and well done. So um, I know I said that twice, but honestly, like it was just, it was anyway. All right. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. Please check out the podcast, and I will see you guys on the next page. Have a great one.